Ernesto Cisneros is the author of Efren Divided, which has been described as a love letter to children of families torn apart by deportation. Ernesto joins me to discuss how his teaching career led him to becoming an author. I was that one kid in the back of the classroom that I was always daydreaming. And when I became a teacher, my students were the ones that encouraged me. They're like, you know, these stories are really good because I would write stories along with them. And I wanted them to see not just the successes, but how difficult it was too. So I would just share my stories, like see how bad the story is. Let's fix it together. And I used it as part of the writing instruction. And uh, they kept encouraging me saying, these are really good. You really should publish these. And so I've been teaching for 25 years. During the 2016 election, mid-year, three of my students shared with me that uh, one of their parents had been deported mid-year. And these are the same kids that are still doing their homework. They're still showing up. And you really would never have known that they were going through something so difficult. So I'm just in awe of these students. And I decided that I needed to do something for them. And so that's how the story kind of came to be. I wanted to send a message to those kids. There's allies out there. There's people they can turn to so that they're not not alone. And honestly, I had pretty much given up. I was thinking that Ephraim Divided was going to be printed out in little packets and just handed it amongst my students and shared with my own personal kids. I never really thought this was going to be published. My kids just went crazy for it. So I, I contacted my agent. I'm like, I wrote this little story about an immigrant family and an immigrant experience. I don't think there's a market for it. I don't think anybody would want to read this, but take a look. And my agent, uh, Deborah Warren, fell in love with it. By the way, this was after about six seven years of submitting and not getting any bites on anything. Two weeks later, we received an offer from HarperCollins. Ney Colado Lainez is a U.S.-based Salvadoran immigrant and the author of 12 children's books with a unique perspective. He's writing about children in the immigration system and their interactions with the immigration service. I am an elementary teacher and, I, and my, all my students are from uh, Latin America and most of their parents are immigrants. Most of the children also are immigrants. Some, some were born here in the United States, but still they have that feeling of, of separation, that feeling of uh, they feel that something bad can happen to their parents. And also, uh, I am an immigrant myself, so writing about uh, immigrant children, I also writing about my own experience. Some of the kids in your classroom or have gone through your classes in the past several years, have your books or your experiences been able to help them? Yes, I have received some, not only for my students, but especially from, from north to south, I have received so many letters from parents who are away from uh, from their children and for children who are away from their parents too. I have accomplished my American dream. As a child, I wanted to be a teacher. That was my main dream, and uh, I am a teacher. And also my other dream was to become a writer, to publish my my own books, and I am also doing that. Jonathan Yo-Yo Elias here. Today I'm with Hector Rodriguez, an educator, artist, and 10th generation Texan. His comic book series, El Peso Hero, tells the story of a rogue Mexican-American superhero who stands up against cartels, corrupt officials, and human traffickers at the U.S.-Mexico border. So I'm an educator for about uh, 12 years in the uh, Dallas area, I, you know, focusing on bilingual education. And so I definitely draw a lot of experiences. Um, you know, I, it's really important to have a pulse in your community, too. Uh, you know, it keeps you grounded, it keeps you humble. And for me, being a teacher is a, you know, it's a superpower being there for the upcoming generation and as well as making sure that their stories are being told. Do you actually like teach comics or graphic novels in the classroom? I've used comic books uh, and graphic novels as teaching tools. You know, I've, I've taught grades from first to fifth grade elementary. And so there's different ways. There's a lot of great resources to use comic books, to use graphic novels to better men and, and definitely hook young readers and create some the upcoming wave of writers and artists. Fayasola Akintola is the special initiatives manager for Mayor William Peduto of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She runs the inclusion programs for immigrants, refugees, and internationals, and was the lead in the United States 2020 census effort. A friend of mine who reached out to me and said, you know what? Hey, like, I know you're trying to get your master's. There's a program in Georgia State that's really awesome, you know, and eventually they could actually pay for you to go to school. And I was like, oh, and it was, and it's that, it's the BioBus program in Georgia State. And, and what that program is, it's it's um, a science-based program. And, and pretty much if people don't know about it, you're in Georgia, you, you should. It's such an incredible program where you have students, um, majority graduate students that help create modules that parallel 
they go in line with the Georgia school standards. And what they do is they go to different classrooms teaching students for free. So pretty much it, it was based on the idea that we know that um, in terms of the states was going down in terms of STEM fields, right? Science, technology, engineering, and, and math, especially for minority communities. But you saw other countries really leaping and, gr and growing in that. So this was a way to kind of combat that, right? That you weren't just being lectured to, but you were interacting with science. You would literally just see kids just be amazed at science, at forensics. And you know, we were talking about, we were discussing and really just encourage and light up the minds of youth. And it was incredible to really see how those changes occurred. And today the BioBus program exists. And again, and it's free. After Amanda King graduated from Case Western University Law School, she decided she would combine her passions for social justice and photography. Today, Amanda is the creative director of Shooting Without Bullets an art-based program that works with young black and brown artists as a tool to help them combat social injustices that they face. Alongside Amanda is her best friend Kelsey Carter, who is the impact director and COO of Shooting Without Bullets. Kelsey works to ensure that Shooting Without Bullets has the structure and resources the program needs to thrive. What are you discussing politically with your students? Are you just telling them to go take pictures of whatever they feel like? It started as uh, a response to state-sanctioned violence after mm -hmm. the murder of Tamir Rice. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Cleveland has had decades of racial tension, tension between the residents and the police. Uh, police terror has been in the Cleveland's legacy for a very long time, but we're looking at the contemporary moment right. and so when I started shooting without bullets the first response the most immediate and urgent was um, police brutality and the need for police reform because we know that young people have the most interactions with police police are everywhere where young people congregate as I came in and I started to work with the students to get to know them to understand how this organization has impacted them I've been blown away um, they all say, yes, I'm an artist and I want to be an artist right. as a career. How many children or youth are in this program and going through this program and what do you hope that they're going to get at the end? We work continuously or for a long period of time with about 50 youth. So uh -huh. th through programmings, through our public programmings, our mini courses, through the seminars I taught early on at an art center and through our exhibitions and special projects, we've touched about the lives of 50 young people. We keep it small because our goal is to work directly with them, to teach them individually, to empower them using their own unique skills and talents and really nurturing that. The black community loves it because it's an empowering thing. It's a thing where young people can come to our program, learn about art as activism, get paid a stipend. Mm -hmm. The art for the first time in a long time represents them, it represents right. their community. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.